Yeah, so Qualcomm has had a very, very successful run of unquestionably leading at the premium tier. However, one of the opportunity areas, or you could call it a challenge if you want to be more frank about it for the company, has been playing and competing in that sort of mid-range space, competing along the likes of, say, MediaTek. Yeah. And so Qualcomm said, well, they didn't just say this week, they basically made some announcements of its newest X7 series, 75, and goes along with its X72 5G modem RF system, basically focused on 5G millimeter wave, some six, uh, includes the satellite feature, which is pretty cool. I did a pod with uh, the GM Durga Melati on that particular topic, but you know, incorporating a lot of those kind of advanced features. It's got not only 5G advanced, but it's got the tensor accelerator for 5G, it's got the AI processing power. And in the end, what it really came down to was Qualcomm wanted to come out with a product that says, hey, you know, across the line, it's massive line of uh, partnerships of the US, the global OEMs across China. It says we want to be able to make sure that Qualcomm modems and Qualcomm systems are inside all or as many of the different designs as possible. And so for the company, I, I fundamentally believe this was a, we want to clearly define that we have the top premium tier and now we're going to go for the rest of it. Um, this isn't a new series. They've had a seven series. Um, it just hasn't necessarily been feature rich enough to displace some of the MediaTek based devices in that mid range tier. And I think that's really what they're coming after here. Um, you know, stronger performance, a lot of weight here going into AI. Um, and of course, you know, Pat, you talk, we talk a little bit at times about Skyworks and Corvo, but one thing that uh, Qualcomm has done extremely well is their 5G RF modem and systems. This is something that um, I believe they're really leaning into as they're sort of selling this story is effectively you're getting near ultra premium experiences and you're, they're enabling them for the tear down. And so Pat, while I'd love to kind of ramble on about it for me, it's a pretty straightforward shot of news here. It's a good uh, good move for the company. There's a lot of market share there, especially outside of the USA, where there's a lot more sales of sort of these mid, mid range and lower tier uh, smart devices from companies like Samsung, Oppo, Xiaomi, and others. And I think this will be a successful product for Qualcomm to continue to expand its market share. Yeah, I mean, this is essentially Qualcomm flexing uh, on the, particularly on the modem side essentially saying, hey, no one can match us on, on modem. Uh, if you need the best, you have to take Qualcomm. <laughs> and Qualcomm has made an incredible uh, business about that. A couple quick features. Obviously, it supports uh, release 16, release 17, but it's also uh, ready for 5G advanced, which is um, uh, revision 18. Uh, some pretty cool use cases are doing an AI uh, on the modem RF combination uh, leveraging tensor tensor acceleration, which is pretty cool. The other thing is it's the first converged millimeter wave sub six and uh, 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 sorry, first um, converged millimeter wave sub six transceiver architecture. Mm -hmm. Essentially means uh, one trip one chip for that. And that means lower PCBs. Typically means uh, lower power and less hassle for the ODMs and OEMs. I can't help but to think, you know, Apple, how do you compete with this, right? Uh, Apple's been working on a 5G modem for, I think, four years, going on five years. Where is this thing? You would have expected it to pop up in at least the iPad because it's a little bit easier on devices that don't have voice. You have to deal with uh, less complexity. But where is this thing? And here we have 5G advanced coming up. Uh, is our uh, Apple's modems going to have this uh, special feature and support for uh, release 18? I have no idea. And the X35, just kind of caboosing on you, um, it's what's called uh, NR Lite, which is red cap, which is in release 17, and how it goes into these IoT use cases that require lower power and, quite frankly, uh, don't all require... Uh, millimeter wave. Millimeter wave is important in elements like the industrial IoT when it comes to performance and, and latency. But when you think about, uh, let's say, uh, 50,000 sensors on a, on a pipeline, it's not necessarily about having the lowest latency. 
it's about having the lowest uh, power with a sufficient amount of performance. Uh, as for folks like um, uh, Corvo and Skyworks, I think in particular Skyworks has shown its ability to work uh, and solve problems, particularly for Apple related to its its RF working with uh, Qualcomm's uh, subsystem. So I'm interested to see what the uh, the company aligns on the RF side with uh, the new X75. That's a good call out too, by the way, on the X35. I, I, I missed that, but you know, the company's leaning big time into the IoT space. And so having those specific solutions uh, deserve their own call. 